Lasers are cool. There are so much you can do with them, from lidars and spectroscopy to laser scanning and laser cooling. If we could do the same with sound waves rather than light, that could have many applications. I mean, who hasn't dreamed of using Kanye West to cut through a slice of bread? But such a sound laser has been difficult to come by. Now a group of physicists say they finally succeeded. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission. It basically works by triggering the emission of one quantum of light, a photon, at one specific frequency and creating a cascade from that. The result is a very focused beam of light in a narrow frequency window. Moreover, laser light is coherent, which means that the phases are all aligned. That makes it extra useful for measurements because one can look for interference patterns. Lasers are great for measuring things because they have such a clean signal. Alas, sometimes they're not ideal, especially not for living tissue that could get damaged or that just blocks the light. Ultrasound could come in handy for some of those purposes. Yes, sound waves travel much slower than light, but in some sense that's an advantage. Because you see, the resolution of an image depends on the wavelength of the wave that you're probing it with. And the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency, but proportional to the speed of the wave. Since sound is so much slower, this means that the wavelength at a given frequency is much smaller than for light. So yes, a sound laser would be nice. It's been difficult to create one for various reasons. One is that the purity of a laser typically depends on some atomic transitions that happen at very narrow frequencies. There isn't anything similar for sound. So where do you get the narrow frequency from? If you use any stuff that typically vibrates, that'll always generate a pretty broad distribution. Even a high quality oscillator that produces a single beep still has a width of a few hertz or so. That's okay for many purposes because most people can't hear differences of less than a few hertz anyway, but if you want to make an image with it, that's not great. The other issue is the A in laser, the amplification. How do you amplify a particular wavelength of sound? So in this new paper, the authors used a technique that's been used before, which is to take a tiny ball of silicon oxide, just a few micrometers in size, and trap that with lasers, so it basically hangs in midair. The lasers slightly shake the ball, so it begins to ring. That ring is a sound wave inside the ball. The ball has typical frequencies, much like a gong. But the lowest of them is at about 10 kilohertz, that's a very high beep, and the next one is above 20 kilohertz, that's no longer audible to human ears. The new thing they introduce is that they also apply an electric field that it's an alternating field of which they scan the frequencies through. That causes a resonance at the frequencies that fit into the vibrating ball and creates a remarkable amplification by about a factor of 1000. You can see this here in this figure that they get this amazingly sharp peak at the resonance frequency. And it's not just that the amplitude is increased, they're also dramatically more narrow. You can see this here in this image for the first peak, that's an improvement by five orders of magnitude. I think they should trademark this as buskill. So that's pretty cool. They did this experiment in vacuum, so the ball doesn't actually emit sound because that'd make it much harder to measure what's going on. But they do have an amplification, coherence and a very narrow frequency range. I'm guessing that a beam is what they'll be working on next, how you can send and receive this sound. This could have a lot of uses, not just for imaging, but also for measuring the properties of materials at subatomic scales. It might also come in useful for communication in areas where electromagnetic radiation doesn't work all that well. Maybe to bypass a jamming system or underwater. So when your Florida beachfront property is drowning, you can still tweet about the climate hoax, no worries. Some 
Sound waves also have quanta, which are called phonons. These have attracted a lot of interest recently because they can interact with light and they can effectively make light interact with other light, which is otherwise somewhat of a headache. A device like this could make it much easier to generate sufficiently many phonons. It's like these guys just invented a new research area. I'm curious to see what happens with that next. So stay tuned. It's also good for coherence. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.